Logic Zero example 23.1, producing a modified form of modus ponens. In this example, we take uh, modus ponens and we take these variable assignments. So we have modus ponens up here at the top and we let P equal A and B and Q equal C or D. And I'm just going to copy the modus ponens form. And then uh, I want you to, to, uh, to bracket the variables here. So with, you don't have to do this, actually write it out this way. You, ultimately, I just want you to be able to do this with your mind. But if this helps at first, Let's put brackets around every variable so that you can focus. So wherever we see P, we're going to replace it with A and B. So I'm going to copy A and B, and for each P, I'm going I'm to paste that in there. And then the same thing for Q. So Q is C or D. So wherever I see Q in the modus ponens form, I'm going to put C or D. Now, we don't need any uh, brackets here. So we've seen this before that we, we don't use parentheses or any sort of brackets uh, in cases like the conclusion or the second premise. Uh, but here, we do want to have these as parentheses. So it's P to the left. P is everything to the left of material consequence. So P is everything to the left of material consequence. And so we need to have everything to the left of material consequence here in parentheses so that it matches the modus ponens form, and that material consequence is clearly the dominant operation of the first premise. Okay. And Q, of course, is everything to the right of that dominant operation. So we, we want to make sure that we put this Q in parentheses so that the dominant operation comes through. Notice that in modus ponens form, P is the second premise. Uh, and when we just have a single variable, that's the dominant operation. But uh, in this more complex form, we have conjunction as the dominant operation. No need for parentheses here because which operation is dominant is clear. There's only one. Similarly, with the conclusion, it is clear that disjunction is the dominant operation, so no parentheses needed. Okay. Uh, now, with this more complex form, we know that this is valid because we've already proved that the modus ponens form is valid. And it really is the same form. So if we just if we just see the pattern, oh, the antecedent of the first premise is being affirmed in the second premise, and the conclusion is the consequent of the first premise. Oh, that's exactly what modus ponens is. And so uh, we have a valid form here both in terms of P and Q and in terms of A, B, C, and D. Uh, and no need for a truth table. If we can see the pattern, and so this is what we're trying to do, is we're trying to train our mind's eye to see these patterns. And once you are able to, with your mind's eye, grasp these patterns, you can look at something like this 
A and B only if C or D, A and B, therefore C or D, you can look at that and you say, oh, that's modus ponens. That's a valid argument. Very handy. All right. Uh, and, and we will see it's not just handy in, in terms of, oh, okay, I know it's a valid argument, but uh, we will see that it's, it's useful later on down the road to construct proofs. And, and then once we're able to construct proofs, as we will do towards the end of the course, um, that will help you to develop the skill of, of really understanding the way formal deduction works. And you can do a lot of this stuff in your head. Uh, even when somebody's like offering an, an argument in English, you can dissect it mentally and recognize an argument as modus ponens or maybe denying the antecedent, and, and that would be an invalid inference. Uh, uh, these things just, as you become more familiar with these forms, because a lot of argumentation can fit into these forms, you just have a natural acuity, a natural awareness of the way that logical inferences are made, being made either validly or invalidly. And that gives you a great insight into uh, the strength of arguments being presented in real life.